Galnet News Digest, 1st of November 3304. We read the news so you don't have to. In this week's news, the FFS made simple. In Rico, the Imperator. Silva, murder mystery, goes cold. Mining boom, predicted. The FFS made simple. The Pilots' Federation has published a simple guide to commanders trying out the new exploration system in Galaxy Simulator 3.3. The designers of the simulation felt that the best way to encourage the use of the new systems would be to provide no controls for them, forcing commanders to apply do-it-yourself modifications to their cockpits to add the 30 new buttons themselves. The guide, which is only available from an unregistered comms beacon orbiting Polaris 1A and is read out very, very slowly in the intergalactic phonetic alphabet at 3am Galactic Standard Time, reads as follows. To use the FFS, switch to the cockpit view with the blue bits and no weapons. You are now utterly defenceless. Turn on the Full Frequency Scanner, or FFS, using the button that hasn't been provided. If you're not already in Supercruise, jump to Supercruise and try again. If you're already in Supercruise, but not throttled back, throttle back and try again. Wait for the set to warm up, and don't touch the tuning dial until the valves are glowing nicely. Now press the energy pulse button once only or you may be irradiated within an inch of your life. This is powerful technology, you know. This will perform what for people not called Adam is known as a honk and will reveal that the huge ball of incandescent nuclear fusion occupying your cockpit window is in fact a star. It will also reveal a selection of wobbly bits on the filtered spectral analysis slider. Now you must waggle your joystick to identify faint blue glowy things. These things are the source of the wobbly bits on the bar and must be investigated. You must also waggle the tuning knob to tune into the signals. Intensity increases as you move to the right. For example, Hutton Orbital Radio is on the left while Obsidian Ant is on the right. Little flocks of birds start appearing on the FSA slider. Aren't they pretty? Little flocks of birds also appear in the FFS reticule. We didn't mention the reticule before, did we? There's a reticule. Your job is to get the birds in the reticule to fly in formation towards the source of the signal. Once your birds are flying symmetrically, follow them to find a circular marker. This is where the bird seed is hiding, but you need to find its frequency first by waggling the tuning dial a bit more. Then you zoom in. You probably don't have a button for zoom in. It's time to get one installed. Zoom in lots more times, following the flock of seagulls each time. And blow me down, there you have it. You've discovered your very first planet. Or perhaps a degraded signal source and it only took a couple of hours. Now all you need to do is work out how to play planetary air hockey to make Commander Baton completely redundant. The guide goes on to say that night vision is a privilege, not a right, and is made available only to those commanders clever enough to find it. Enrico the Imperator Unease about the coming of creatures not like us has spawned a new nationalist movement in the Empire. Calling itself the Nova Imperium, it's headed by the Imperator, a charismatic leader promising easy solutions to the Empire's problems and blaming the Alliance and Federation for humanity's failure to stem the tide of immigrant Thargoids. 
his message strikes a chord with many older imperial citizens who feel the Empire would be better off without the treaties of cooperation with the other galactic powers and who hearken back to the glory days of the Great Battle of Liberation of 2324 when the Empire fought off the Federation's attempts to prevent the genocide of the natives of Achenar 6D. To the days of the offensive against the Old World's coalition of 2498 and to the Lightning Thursday Offensive of 2959. The Imperator wears an Imperial Navy uniform. During rallies, his followers parade through the streets, smashing the windows of properties that don't belong to Imperial citizens. After which, Emperor Arissa Livigny Duval doesn't seem all that bad after all. Silver Murder Mystery Goes Cold Alliance Interpol has announced that it's baffled by the murder of presidential candidate and entrepreneur Fazia Silva. Silva was murdered midway through the campaign in her apartment at Hume Orbital. Interpol has clarified that she was murdered using a sophisticated nerve agent, not a simple poison as first thought. Whoever murdered her gained access through several layers of security, suggesting that the murderer may have been either a senior figure in the Alliance or a very clever assassin. With no leads left to follow, Interpol is not pursuing its investigation further. This is the second major disappointment for Alliance Interpol, following the loss of prisoner Riri McAllister, the so-called nexus of the League of Reparation. McAllister went missing after the ship transporting her to a medical facility following an attempt on her life during her trial was mysteriously destroyed. Interpol has listed her, rather hopefully, as missing presumed dead. McAllister, who was ostensibly seeking revenge on descendants of the Intergalactic Naval Reserve Arm for the murder of Commander John Jameson, specialised in committing her murders in high-security areas using nerve agents. Mining boom predicted. Adam has left the firm of solicitors Adam, Adam and Will and has formed a new mining supply company with someone called Ed, and has demonstrated a range of new mining equipment. There is equipment for probing the ring to find mineral hotspots. There's the pulse wave scanner to identify specific asteroids with high mineral content. There are improved prospect Olympics to identify the exact location of surface deposits, subsurface deposits and fissures. There's the abrasion blaster to scrape off the surface deposits. There's the dispersal missile for subsurface deposits. And there's the seismic charge warhead for splitting the asteroid apart at the fissures to reveal a whole new set of surface deposits on the new smaller asteroids created as a result. The need to equip three new hardpoints and one new utility slot with all this mining gear means that the era of the Lacon Type 6 as an ideal small mining rig are numbered. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News, we read the news so you don't have to. <laughs>